Um, let's go over here. Um, Professor Gralia, I, <laughs> I share your concern about judicial overreach, but I question your assertion that it's in the interest of the legislature to enforce the Constitution as much as it is in the interest of the judicial judiciary to enforce the Constitution. I think, especially in the example of the First Amendment, that's clearly untrue. It would be in the interest of the legislature to suppress political speech that would serve to oust incumbents with whom the, the people are unhappy. So, I mean, it, taking, your, taking your speech to its logical conclusion, wouldn't that allow the legislature to resurrect seditious libel, a prospect which would horrify the founders? Well, I think, you know, that's, uh, we live with human beings. We elect these people, and that's the best we can do. But you leave it to the, the question is, who can you trust more? And I would say the judges you can trust least. First of all, they're lawyers. With two right? exceptions. Right? They're, 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 they don't engage in a profession or a study which uh, makes for ethical fastidiousness, right? <laughs> it's not who, normally who you turn to for moral leadership, it's the lawyers. That's, that's what they are. If, you want to, if we need philosophers like Platonic government, at least put a philosopher there, not, not, not suitor, right? The, uh, uh, and, and secondly, even more important, they have unlimited power. Power corrupts. You know, there's no way that human beings can be able to do it, and they won't. And the Supreme Court can. They can do. They they don't they don't like uh, something. They can simply hold it unconstitutional. And so, we, what we, what our law is, whether or not uh, you can have um, an all male military school, whether Texas can have laws, Colorado can pass a thing on, on, all depends on how Kennedy votes. Uh, that's that's what we've come to. I say that is is not an improvement over democracy. Does democracy have its, its problems? And its, government has a problem. That's why we should have as little of it as possible. But turning over poli basic policy making to a majority vote of these nine life-tenured, unremovable, unelected lawyers is not the answer. It has given us, it gives us Miranda rules, which now are being applied to uh, en enemy combatants. It gave us busing for school racial balance. It gave us the Civil War, for goodness sakes. With the Bread Scott decision, whatever you say, well, well let's get the, the pluses and the minuses. I say 620,000 deaths is on my side. Oh, this right. doesn't work. It's a bad idea. We'll take one more question, but before we do, um, Gene Meyer has something that he needs to address. Go ahead. I had, uh, two, two quick announcements I wanted to make. Uh, one, uh, since many, most of the people here are students, uh, I'd like to ask our student, the people, uh, who are, run our student division to stand up so you can see them and make sure you introduce yourself to them if you haven't before. That's Peter Redpath over there, our student director, uh, Kate Aitlin, uh, Kate, Kate Beer, and Daniel Sir. Um, so I just wanted them to stand up so you have a make sure any of you want to have a chance to introduce yourself to one of them. And the second thing is a, is a logistical announcement for here. At lunch time, uh, Professor Gralia, I want to uh, thank you for your energy in raising me from my stupor over here uh, earlier. Um, the quick question that I do have, however, is for the whole panel, wherever you want to interject. I know Professor Gralia has uh, been the target of several questions. So my question is, it was raised originally by your comments, which is basically, are the rights that we have based on a reservation or a granting of power in the Constitution? I know that's a debate that has happened through time, and I was just curious, as the panel determines, as an originalist viewpoint, are we reserving power from government or reserving our rights from government, or are we only granting certain powers to government? All right, who would like to take that? Well, I would say, you know, the whole rights thing is... <laughs> oh, is someone answering it? Go ahead. Uh, let's give somebody else a chance. <laughs> I thought he said me. Go ahead. Professor uh, Barnett, go ahead. Well, this is the subject of multiple symposia, not mm. just uh, a, a question, an answer to a question in a panel. But uh, I'll just observe that the Ninth Amendment says that the enumeration in the Constitution of certain rights shall not be construed to deny or disparage others retained by the people, which suggests that the people had them prior to the uh, formation of government prior to the enactment of the Bill of Rights, that the rights that they have is not a result of that. And then the Tenth Amendment talks about powers that are delegated. So if we just look to the text of the Constitution, which 
is where I would look first, you see some evidence that the uh, Constitution presupposes, one of the underlying assumptions of the Constitution is that first comes rights and then comes government. It is expressly stated in the Declaration of Independence. It is def that proposition that first come rights and then comes government was elaborately defended by John Locke and others in the tradition that influenced the founders. So this was a fundamental assumption of this written document. And the only other thing I would just say, just in light of the power of judges, the unlimited, awful, terrible, horrible power of judges, and Brennan in particular, although he's dead, um, the uh, judicial negation is not legislation. The power of the court to say no to the other bodies now, I realize the court sometimes goes beyond that, and it starts engaging in legislation, and that's another matter. But just the power of the court to say no to co-equal branches of government is not itself lawmaking in the sense of imposing a policy on us. It is saying that a policy chosen by another branch of government cannot be imposed on us. And whatever you think about that intervention, if you think it's a good idea or a bad idea, and what it should be grounded on and what it should not be grounded on, it is not the same thing as making policy. And it's not the same thing as making law in the sense that legislatures are called upon, or making policy in the sense that legislatures are called upon to make policy. I just want to point that out. Judicial negation is not legislation. All right, we'll have to leave it there. We are over time. Please join me in thanking the panel.